Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. My name is Paul, and if you're new to this channel, this is where I talk about how I switched my career to web development late in life and what I learned in the process. If this is something that interests you, consider subscribing. In this video, we'll talk about four must-have projects that every beginner should complete for their portfolio, especially when you're just starting out learning to code. Web development is a massive field and there's a lot to learn. The most common mistake is to spend too much time doing tutorials without completing any project. Taking tutorials becomes a form of procrastination. Don't fall into this trap. If you haven't seen my other videos where I show you three courses that you should take on Udemy, here's the quick version. You need to take one HTML and CSS course, one JavaScript, and one front-end framework course. I usually recommend React.js. So stop buying new courses until you complete these four projects. If you ever feel stuck like you're missing information, just use Google and YouTube to find the answers to a particular issue you're having. Your first courses will teach you the basics of what you're trying to learn, and you will have enough understanding to be able to start searching for a solution on your own. A big part of learning to code is being able to struggle through the problems and learning how to find the answers. Taking another course and another course just won't help you, especially if you're just starting out. The best use of your time is to try to complete a project based on the information you learned from your first course. And if you do have questions, reach out to that instructor in Udemy. They will help you. But don't take another course. It's not going to help you. Really focus on finishing your first project. I made all these mistakes. As exciting as it is to buy a new fancy course, just don't do it. So here's an outline of the four projects I recommend you should build first and why. Your first project should be HTML and CSS website only. Focus adding as much functionality with CSS so you could understand how it works. Next, after you complete your JavaScript course, you should do a basic JavaScript project. This is going to be very easy because we're going to take our previous project and add JavaScript functionality to it. After that's said and done and you complete your React JS course, you're ready to tackle your next project which is take the project that you build with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and convert it to React.js. And the last project that I would recommend is learning about what are REST APIs and how to be able to consume it, to be able to populate your React.js project with data from an API. And after you complete all those projects, I would challenge you to continue learning and learn about databases and learn how you could use Google's Firebase or Strapi framework to help you create a backend that you don't have to build from scratch that will allow to see how you're able to create a backend with a database and how to consume that data on your front-end project that you just created. So let's take a look at all of these in more detail. If you're looking to get into web development, you won't be able to do so unless you learn HTML and CSS. It is required. So this is where we are going to start. Your goal is to create a simple HTML and CSS static website. It should have a top menu, have a big hero section, a subsection with three columns, a section with images and text as well as an email and a sign up form and you could include a name an email and a telephone number as well as a footer use your CSS to add styling hover effects and transition as well to lay out your content on the page you don't have to overdo it what I would recommend just find a site that you like and recreate just the front page one thing that I would encourage you do on this project is make your website responsive so you will have to use media queries to define a mobile view a tablet view and a desktop Stop you. Most good HTML and CSS courses will cover everything you need to complete this project. Remember, you only need one course. I would recommend Brad Travesty's Modern HTML and CSS course on Udemy, but you could find any course you like. Just make sure it's recent and has good reviews. If you have questions about the course, you could always ask me. I pretty much have all the top web development courses on Udemy. <laughs> Lol, I didn't listen to my own advice and I was stuck in tutorial hell. That is where you think the way you get better is by buying more courses and not finishing them. So once you finish your HTML and CSS project and you complete your second course on JavaScript. The next project is simple. You don't need to start from scratch. Just take your existing HTML and CSS project and add JavaScript functionality. The goal here is to use some of the things that you learn in the course and apply them here to allow you get better understanding of JavaScript by practicing. Now you could do whatever you like, but here are some things I would recommend that you include in your JavaScript project. 
First, you should add a button that when it's clicked is going to show or hide the mobile menu. Then you should create an image carousel. Place it into your hero section of your previous project. You should have some buttons that will allow you to see the next picture or the previous picture. And if no button is clicked, you should have some timeout event that after a couple of seconds will automatically show you the next slide. Next, you should include a modal window. Basically something that opens up a model to reveal some information. It could be a sign up form, it could be a larger image when someone clicks on a thumbnail on your site. After that, I want you to use JavaScript to add simple validation to check if your user added a valid email, name, or phone number. The goal is not to make a complex algorithm that will identify your nationality based on your name. No, instead, it's just to check if the input is entered, so it's not blank. Make sure that the telephone numbers are numbers and not letters. You could also check for length. Make sure that you have a limit of how much text or how many numbers for the phone number a user can enter. The goal here, if the form doesn't validate, the key here is to display an error message to the user and have them be able to finish filling out the form before submitting. And for our final bonus challenge, if you choose to accept it, you could make the top header menu on your website hide or unhide on scroll. Hint, you use JavaScript for that. Sure, there's a lot more you can do. But the point here is not to make the project overly complicated, but to make sure that you bring this project to completion. As always, there's plenty of great JavaScript courses on Udemy. I recommend finding one that has good reviews and not older than two years. Modern JavaScript by Brad Traversy is another great class. I know this because it's one of the courses I took on Udemy, but you could find any course you like. It doesn't have to be the courses I recommend. Now, once you completed your JavaScript project, your next step is to learn a JavaScript framework. I prefer React.js. So once you finish your React.js course, you're ready for the third project. And it is super simple. What we're going to do, we're going to take our previous HTML and CSS and JavaScript project and convert it to React. By this point, it is amazing because you now have three completed projects. You have HTML and CSS website, you have HTML and CSS website with JavaScript functionality added to it, and you have a simple React.js project. All those three things are required for you to be able to get a job as a front-end development. At bare minimum, those are the three things that are required to be able to start looking for a job in front-end web development. Before starting the fourth project, you need to learn about what are REST APIs and how to be able to consume the data via fetch calls and how to work with JSON data. Most likely the JavaScript course that you took, especially if you took Brad Travesty course, he definitely has a section there on working with APIs. Make sure you understand how to get data via fetch using promises .then statements or a sync await to be able to make a synchronous request with JavaScript so you could have that data available to you to use in your website. The goal for this project is not to build an API from scratch, but instead to add some sort of functionality to your website that consumes an API. One of the coolest things that I had to create that I really liked, and I think you should do this for your project, is to create a weather widget. Something that connects an API and is able to get the local weather for the area that you live in, and you could put that widget in your header that every time you log in or go to your website, you could see the weather for today. Once you complete these four projects, pat yourself on the back. No, you really deserve it. Most people can't even finish their first project. The most important lesson of these four projects that I recommended to you is to make sure that you're working to completion. Now, where do you go from here? Well, you continue study. At this point, you could dive deeper into the technologies you have learned or take a class on web design and user experience. This is helpful if you're looking to focus on front-end development. And honestly, this is what I would recommend to do until you land your first job. But as a bonus, you could continue to move forward and learn about databases like SQL or MongoDB and how to use services like Strapi or Google's Firebase to set up easy backends that allow you to store your data in the cloud and populate your website dynamically. As you can see, there's a lot to learn and it can be daunting, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it. Even if it takes you two to three years to get a job, it is still better than being at a job that you don't like or has no potential for financial growth. Some people will say, I want it now. Two years is too long time to wait. I don't have two years. Maybe you will accomplish your goal sooner. It really depends on how much effort you're willing to put in. Now, this is not the part of the video where I tell you in two, three months you could do it because I want to be honest with you on this channel. And and it does take work and it requires a lot of effort on your part and it's not gonna be easy. 
Learning to code might not be for everyone, but if you like solving problems, working with a computer, and having possibility to work remotely, then keep it up, it's totally worth it. One thing's for sure, if you do nothing, and in two years, you will still be stuck at a job that you don't like. Now, if you're working and you love your job, God bless you. But if you're looking to switch careers to do something else, just don't use, oh, it's gonna take too long to get to where I wanna do as an excuse, because the truth is, if you do nothing, you're still gonna be at that same job. I know what that feels like, because that's where I was for a very long time. So before I go, I just wanna say thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this video helpful. And I wanna say, don't give up. You could totally do this. If you have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments, reach out to me. I will answer them as best as I can because I really want to show you that it's totally worth pursuing your goals and it's totally possible to accomplish what you set out to do. I am 40 years old now. Just six months ago, I landed my real job outside of freelancing. Now, some people will be like, oh my God, like this is crazy. Why didn't you give up? And I got a lot of that. I had a lot of doubters. I had a lot of people who told me learning something new when you're older is impossible. You're never going to be able to do it. So don't listen to the negativity. Just do it. If this is what you want, keep at it. And I'm here to give you support anytime. Let me know in the comments and I will help you guys out. If you like what I do here and you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do it is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. It helps me greatly to see the interest in my channel that allows me to keep doing these videos for you. And as always, thanks again for watching and your time. And remember, happy coding.